My name is Christopher Kennedy. I'm a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner out of Salt Lake City, Utah. I've long been curious about other styles of martial arts, however. And recently, I've decided to go check a few others out. For me, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is the art of adaptability. And apart from simply learning about different martial arts styles, I also want to see how well a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner can adapt while training with and competing against martial artists of completely different backgrounds. So join me as I increase my awareness and understanding of the martial arts world as a whole, as I venture through other realms of martial arts to see what there is to learn, who there is to meet, and what there is to overcome. So, I am on my way down to Arizona finally, headed to a pink ration gym. It has been really difficult finding a pink ration gym. Um, I swear there are like less than 10 pink ration gyms in the United States. Um, there are a lot of gyms that call themselves pink ration, but they just teach MMA. Uh, this gym that I'm going to, that I found in Arizona, um, actually has pink ration classes. Four days a week they teach a pink ration class. They also teach MMA, they also teach uh, like kickboxing classes, and they also teach submission grappling classes. So it's basically another MMA school, but it's, it's pretty much the only place I found that teaches straight up pink ration. Now, I'm mainly a jiu-jitsu practitioner, a uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. The gym that I train at is a big MMA gym, one of the bigger ones in Utah. And so I've had a lot of exposure to MMA. Pinkration was supposed to be like the original MMA, yet I still don't know a whole lot about it. And Pinkration, being the original MMA, I figured it would be a good martial art to go research right now. And I've actually been wanting to go research it uh, for a while. Researching it online is one thing, of course. You can uh, find a ton of information online. There's a lot of interesting things you can find online. But you can never really understand a martial art until you've gone and witnessed it and tried it for yourself. Now the goal here is to really understand modern day paint creation. There are not a whole lot of people who have trained paint creation in the United States. And as luck would have it, in San Diego, about seven hours west of Mesa, where I'm going to this uh, pancreation gym, there's actually a pancreation tournament going on. So I'm uh, going to train pancreation for about a week with this gym, and then I'm going to go try my hand at pancreation. From what I understand, pancreation is like, at least this tournament that I'm going into, it's basically like MMA without headshots. So it's like a dumbed down version of MMA, or if you want to look at it in a different light, you can say it's a more intense version of submission grappling. Well, after about 12 hours of driving and one new tire, I'm finally here in Arizona, in Mesa, Arizona. It is really warm. Uh, feels good though, I like the heat. So staying true to the Homeless Ninja name, I have decided to not stay anywhere. I have some friends here in the area, but I'm not gonna stay with any of them. I'm not going to rent any uh, rooms at any hotel or motel, I am going to be essentially homeless for the next two weeks here in Mesa. I'm gonna live out of my car, I'm going to shower at a local rec center every day, and I'm going to do my laundry at a laundromat. 
So the first thing I want to do is go find the pancreation gym where I'm going to be working out for the next two weeks. However, if I'm showing up to this gym for the first time, uh, meeting this guy and asking if I can train with him and interview him and... Your destination is on the right. And pick apart his martial arts style. Um, the first thing I want to do is actually get presentable. Now, for a homeless ninja, getting presentable basically means showering. So whenever I pull into a new area, the first thing I like to do is go find a community center or a rec center. I prefer community centers over commercial gyms because commercial gyms often make you sign contracts. Whereas at a community center, you can just show up, give them 30 bucks, and they'll let you use their facilities for the next month. Nine times out of 10, a community center will have a weight room and a shower, so it's the perfect place to exercise when the martial arts gym isn't open. And it's the perfect place to conduct personal hygiene for the month that you're doing the homeless thing. I'm here with my buddy James Chimera. He's one of the uh, pancreation students here, and he also teaches a lot of the time. This is predominantly an MMA gym. Uh, pancreation is perfect for cage fighting for the street. It's designed for MMA. It was MMA. My first practice at the Spartan Academy was with James. As a pancreation practitioner with a strong kickboxing background, he really enjoyed the stand-up aspect of the fight game. Having a fairly undeveloped striking game myself, James decided to first show me some basic pancreation stand-up, starting with some variations of the jab, oh, including the flicker way. jab. Oh. Hmm. And it's just called a flicker jab. Okay. And it doesn't really have that much pop. If I go to hit you in the chest with it, it doesn't really... Okay. It has a little bit, but it doesn't have... It's not going to... Uh, uh, no. Yeah. So, all that's designed for is just getting there quicker. Okay? And the power jab. You come in, you bend just slightly at the knee, and you just pop that hip out more. Instead of just the normal jab where you just kind of take the step. Okay? So you just come in. This is an awesome kickboxing to MMA move. Alright? So as soon as they throw the outside kick, you are actually just hooking it. You don't have to grab it, you don't have to do anything. He also showed me some fancier stuff. Things that I probably won't be using anytime soon, but they were still fun to practice. Just take that step and square back up. Show one time that you can try. Did you get up your shoulder like that? Or no, you I just popped it with my bicep. Okay. So, boom, boom, boom. As you're shooting. It's like as I'm shooting your video. Yeah. That's exactly it. Because this is the reason for it. Okay. Knowing that I was more comfortable as a grappler, James also decided to show me a few techniques which might help me more comfortably transition from striking to grappling in a fight. Including a double jab to an overhand punch to a takedown combination. And a fun defense to an inside leg kick. Push that shoulder, punch him directly in the face, whatever you want. If you're a striker, you're going to come in, boom. If you're more of a wrestler or a grappler, you're going to come here. Then you slam them down. You can slam them down, you can do a So it's my second day here in Arizona. Uh, yesterday, I had my first pancreation practice, and it was awesome. I showed up to this gym. Uh, I think it's called, I think they just call it American Pancreation here out of Mesa, Arizona, of course. And when I got there, uh, none of the head instructors uh, were actually there. It was only me, uh, one other student, and then there was like a, a student teacher there. He's a, he's a kid who fights out of the gym and he trains there. Um, but he also teaches a class occasionally. Uh, his name was James. He had a lot of really good stuff to share. I told him I was a jiu-jitsu practitioner. Um, and he told me that he used to do jiu-jitsu. Told me that he got to purple belt, 
And after he got to Purple Belt, he uh, made the switch over to Pink Ration. From what I can tell, the grappling in Pink Ration is a lot more intense. It's a lot more fierce. Uh, the grappling in Jiu Jitsu is very mellow and calm, at least from my experience. The grappling that they use in Pink Ration, um, not only is it more intense, but they have uh, different ways of doing the moves as well. And they all seem just as effective um, as the Jiu Jitsu moves. Yesterday I did Pink Ration literally for five hours and I didn't spar at all. Uh, they were just showing me new moves and I was drilling the new moves. After training with James uh, for a few hours, I went to uh, ASU, uh, Arizona State University, and uh, the head instructor, Jeff Funicello, I think his name is. The guy is a genius of fighting. When I met Jeff, he was an extremely humble guy. Really down to earth, really cool. And the stuff he was showing me was um, was very effective. It was stuff that actually worked. One of the ways you know that it actually works, one of some experience in knowing what's gonna work and what's not gonna work when it comes to grappling anyway. And two, he would explain why things worked. And everything made sense, and uh, I can't wait to keep training with the guys. Today I'm gonna go to a boxing class at this pink ration gym. And uh, I think after boxing class, then they have a pink ration class, so I can uh, keep studying pink ration. Keep trying to get ready for this tournament that I'm gonna be fighting in in less than two weeks. So, a good thing to do as a homeless bum is come to the parks. Uh, you have a lot of downtime as a homeless person. <laughs> I have no idea what these blue things are for, by the way. If anyone knows, they should post down below. There's another, there's another one over there. They're like, they're big, they're tall. This thing's probably a foot taller than me, and then it goes up, and that thing's probably like three feet taller than me. Anyway, let's do some pull-ups. Training with Jeff was a truly valuable experience. Jeff started wrestling as a child and he's been doing martial arts ever since. For over two decades, this man has been teaching wrestling, submission grappling, judo, kickboxing, mixed martial arts, and pancreation. Student and teacher aren't the only titles he's held, however. After training and competing in 17 different countries and all over the United States, this man holds over 100 titles, ranging from black belt to gold medalist in several national and international events, including wrestling, submission grappling, judo, and sambo events. This impressive repertoire makes Jeff not only one of the most experienced people I've ever trained under, but also one of the most successful. He gets pulled, head here, locked there. And all you're doing is touching here and grabbing the waist. While visiting the Spartan Academy, I had the honor of sitting down with Jeff for an interview. I was unaware of this before the interview, but it turns out that Jeff lectures at Arizona State University sometimes, and I quickly found out that he is not only knowledgeable about the techniques of martial arts, but also their history. A five-minute interview turned into a 90-minute interview, so unfortunately I can't include the whole thing here. 
I do encourage you, however, to click on this link sometime and listen to the interview in its entirety. Everything Jeff had to say was really quite fascinating. Hey, this is Chris Kennedy again, and I've been in Arizona for a little over two weeks now, and I have loved it. Um, uh, the weather, the food, and the training have all been phenomenal. I'm here with Jeff Funicello. Of, did I say your name correctly? Funicello, yes. Funicello, okay. He is the master instructor of American Pain Creation at the Spartan Academy here in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, Jeff, man, it's, uh, really thank you for letting me come train with you and your uh, team for the last few weeks. My pleasure. It's been phenomenal. Uh, really nice students and a lot of really... Uh, good skilled students as well. Um, so I'm mostly curious um, about uh, your history actually. Um, so obviously you teach pain creation here, but um, I feel like your uh, base is strongest in wrestling. Have you been wrestling for a long time? I mean, yeah. obviously yes, but... Yeah, I uh, started as a kid. I obviously didn't really get serious until high school. And then I wrestled at Arizona State. I was varsity for three years. And then I went into my international career after that, uh, specializing in Greco Roman. Okay. Probably wrestled in 50 countries throughout my career. Jeez. That over a thousand matches. That's awesome. Between Jeez. all the styles of wrestling. Huge Primarily, most, most of those would have been Greco Roman. Okay. You've also done a bunch of other things, right? I mean, I saw some pictures of you with like, a black belt and stuff on the walls. What other martial art backgrounds do you have? Uh, judo, sambo, uh, submission wrestling. Uh, we differentiate between jiu-jitsu and submission grappling because there's, okay. there's a big difference uh, in the mobility, uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, boxing, oh, right. close quarter battle. So it is a complete mixed martial art. Right. Uh, come from a strong wrestling background, and our submission grappling itself, our submission wrestling, uh, is a wrestling-based uh, uh, grappling style, which is great for MMA. And uh, wh why I say that is. Um, a lot of principles such as position before submission. So uh, this school, uh, you call it a pain creation school, um, but you have like such a huge martial arts background. Why did you choose to make like a pain creation school instead of, I don't know, an MMA school or a wrestling school or a judo school? So obviously a well, black belt judo. That's a good, good question. I get asked it all the time. Um, well. Uh, Crazy as it is, I, I, I am the guy that coined the phrase mixed martial arts back in 19. Really? Yeah. Sad when that's your claim to fame, but that's it's true. Um, basically, uh, I came up with this program of mixed, all these mixed uh, martial hmm. arts. I grew up wrestling and boxing and got into judo and kickboxing and everything just kind of stemmed and grew. And in 1990, I started the program. And uh, trying to figure out what to call it and I did some research and I, apparently the ancient Greeks had been doing this for thousands of years in the ancient Olympics um, and uh, uh, fought to the death in the Olympic Games and uh, I was a wrestler and I was always intrigued by the classics and rather than calling it something else and uh, I paid homage to the originals so really even the UFC and any other MMA gym they're actually doing pain creation. It's, it's the original. The, the actual word means mixed martial arts. The, the translation in Greek is all power is fighting. Okay. Or all strings, all things in strength. It literally means pain. And if you look at the, what the combatives in the ancient Olympics were about, you'd understand that it was really, really was a complete mixed, mixed martial art. But they had five forms of combat in the ancient Olympic Games. They started off, they had boxing. One leather strap, hmm. and, uh, and they fought no rounds. They fought until one guy was knocked out or could not continue. Then they had a, a form called pugilism, which was essentially Muay Thai kickboxing. Hmm. Hands, feet, elbows, knees, no rounds. They fought until somebody was knocked out or could not continue. But no grappling? No. That, that was, so they had boxing, pugilism, then they had upright wrestling, which was um, kind of like our folk style wrestling. It was a hybrid. Um, Greco Roman in, came in later. Um, but there was a lot of Greco-Roman techniques. And what I mean by that is they do start off on their feet, take down, and do a pin. And if they didn't, there's two ways to end it. There's no points. You had to pin the guy, or you could lock up upper body and throw him flat on his back. What they call a two-shirt touch ball. So a lot of guys, rather than scrambling around all day long trying to, trying to pin the guy, exhausting that kind of injury, they try to end it early by getting that big throw. Huh, okay. There's, so there was only two ways to end it. Touch ball or pin. Huh. And then they had what they called ground wrestling or pancratic wrestling. 
Submission wrestling, submission grappling. Oh. We do everything they do. Take down into a submission. All joint locks, elbow locks, arm bars, chokes, ankle locks, all of it. Everything that you think you see in submission grappling and jiu-jitsu, they did no gi. Hmm. And it was an Olympic sport. Take down into a submission. Awesome. So then they combine all those. The be all end all. All powers fight. Mixing all those four together oh. in what they called pancration. Huh. So you had boxing. Fusion was just essentially Muay Thai kickboxing, wrestling, and submission grappling, all in one to make pancreation. So it was a complete mixed martial arts, even by today's standard, if not more. Interesting. They fought to the death, and they were phenomenal at their craft. So I guess uh, one of my last questions would be, um, <coughs> there are so few schools that actually call themselves pancreation schools. I don't know why. You don't know why? Okay. There are a lot of those. They have some new kind of where you have no affiliation with these guys. Uh, the ones that wear the little pajamas, and they do like mm. the, the 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 fila um, essentially karate guys. Right, right. We have no affiliation with that. I've had my guys go into those tournaments, and they're neat, but that's really not what Pancrase is. Why I say ours is based off of wrestling styles, no gi wrestling styles, because I mean, when you think about it. Gi is basically, it's a, it's, it's a cold weather sport. Had the Spartans lived in Siberia, they would have developed a belt and jacket style, just mm. like Sambo was developed in the, the tundra in, in right. Russia. But Spartans, pretty much on the Mediterranean, it's nice weather, we're running around half naked. We don't want to fight like that. Right. So, uh, believe it or not, you're answering my last question. Yeah, yeah. As well, well, thanks so. for coming. Uh, um, we, we really loved uh, having you. you came in with a yeah, I wish I could have stayed longer, but you guys were awesome. You guys, uh, well, do come back again. again. I definitely will. Come back again. Shake your hand one more time. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Jeff. Thank Just in case any of you guys are curious about my kind of nightly rituals before I go to sleep in my car, I usually take out my contact lenses uh, first, and I usually brush my teeth by uh, uh, take the mouthwash and I just fill up the cap about halfway full, and then I just kind of dip my toothbrush in. And that's just kind of how I brush my teeth. Um, found it's a lot easier and I need a lot less water if I do it this way uh, rather than using toothpaste. This place is the Hygienic Homeless Ninja's best friend. The laundromat. I have a lot of dirty clothes from uh, going to the gym twice a day while I'm out here training. So I come here about once a week, maybe twice a week sometimes to get all that stuff clean since I don't travel with a whole lot of clothing. Something else I like to do uh, since I don't have practice until the evening, so I like to come find parks. There's some beautiful parks here in Arizona. And I just come and uh, either I'll go for a walk or I'll put my tennis shoes on and go for a jog. So check out this old guy over here. I was getting finished up with a jog in the park and walked over and uh, saw him working on his car. I thought he had a flat tire or something. and Looked like kind of an old guy, so I thought I'd ask him if he needed some help. And he'd Definitely did not need any help. He was extremely familiar with them. He was dropping all sorts of car terms. It's like a car doctor or something like that. I kept thinking he needed help. It took me about five minutes to realize that he came to the park to fix his brakes, to change his brakes out. He says that he hates taking his car to the shop. He doesn't trust a bunch of the people and then he started Tell me a bunch of stories about how a bunch of uh, mechanics have done foolish things with his car and he's tried to correct them and stuff. And I guess because he knows all about cars. Anyway, so now he's just an old dude that retired a few years ago. He just comes to the park and uh, works on his car by himself. And I realized he didn't need help. I kept trying to walk away, <laughs> but he kept uh, stopping me and showing me pictures of things and telling me stories of things and it was only about 15 minutes but it was a it was a good 15 minutes it was interesting some of these older gentlemen are really interesting to talk to they have cool stories he told me that he was given his first chainsaw when he was 10 years old he said it was his 10th birthday 
and he thought he was going to get a wagon for his birthday. And he went to his dad, and his dad was like, we want a birthday gift? And he said, yeah, and he gave him his key to his car, and he said, go open up the back of the car, and your gift will be in the back. And he went out, and he opened up the back, and uh, he was expecting to see a wagon, but there was a chainsaw. He went back in, and he was like, Dad, I think there's a mistake. <laughs> you there's a chainsaw in the back seat. And his dad said, yep, it's time for you to start learning how to work. I'm here with Justin Alford. He's one of the instructors here at the Pancreation School. And today he's going to be teaching you some grappling. But just as I go, I'm going to pull this knee down with my opposite hand. I'm going to bump. bump the Justin was a submission specialist who especially loved leg locks. Some of the moves he taught me, like this ankle lock, were relatively identical to leg locks that I've been taught before in jiu-jitsu. Other moves, like this calf crusher from a failed ankle lock, this variation of the Kimura, and this surprisingly simple escape from side control were completely new to me. So it was my first Saturday practice here at this pink ration gym, and um, Nobody showed up but me, so it was pretty cool because I got to have a, a little one-on-one -on -one practice with the coach that showed up. The coach that was there today was a big fan of foot locks, so we went over ankle locks and foot locks for a while. The coach that I was working with today, he started out uh, doing Taekwondo like a lot of kids do. And then uh, he got older and started doing kickboxing. And then after doing kickboxing for a while, he had a guy show up, um, a karate guy actually, show up to his kickboxing gym, and this karate guy um, kicked him in the leg a few times and hurt him really bad. <laughs> um, for those of you that don't know, American kickboxing doesn't allow leg kicks. So when this guy uh, came in and kicked him in the leg a few times and they were sparring it, blew him away and he started asking him to show him some more things. So the karate guy sits down and shows him some submissions as well. After he learned about like that leg kick and the, uh, and the submissions and stuff, he said he started uh, training with that guy instead of at this kickboxing gym. And then he was eventually led to American Pancreation, which is here in Mesa, of course. And he's trained with them for several years. So, Sunday is kind of a boring day for a homeless ninja. I, it's my rest day. I don't exercise at all on Sunday. So I've decided to go visit a few areas. Um, if you jump on a tripadvisor.com, it often has a list of uh, things you can do or places to visit or things to see when visiting a new city. Um, on TripAdvisor.com they have a list of things to do in Mesa. They have a list of things to do in a lot of cities. And they have, they have 30 some things to do here in Mesa and uh, one of the free things you can do is visit this rose garden. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to just uh, enjoy the breeze and enjoy the shade and enjoy some food and then I'll go uh, check out the garden. It smells absolutely amazing over here by the way. That rose garden was really cool. It was a lot cooler than I thought it would be anyway. I think my favorite thing about it was the scents, all the smells, it smelled so good. It's kind of a windy day right now in Arizona and whenever I was standing downwind of all these flowers, I would just get a huge, like really sweet gust of wind. It was one of the coolest things. And I was gonna go visit a friend. I've made a few friends since I've arrived here. It's uh, actually really, really easy to make friends with people in Arizona. I've noticed that there's just a lot of really cool, nice people here. Uh, just a lot of very friendly, very warm, open people. And this friend of mine that I was gonna go visit is actually not ready for me yet, so I'm gonna go visit location number eight on tripadvisor.com. And the reason I chose number eight was because, much like number nine, that little rose garden, number eight is also free. I don't have to pay anything to come here. I can just kind of show up and check it out. Uh, I'm at um, an LDS, uh, temple, a Mormon temple. I'm uh, outside of it right now. 
And it is absolutely gorgeous. It is every bit as beautiful as the Rose Garden. You go ahead and check out the garden that they've got going on here. Beautiful, they have so many flowers. Well, huge trees here. Check out this tree. This looks like a normal tree here. It just keeps going. Look at that thing. It just goes up and up and up. Alright, I'm finally leaving Arizona. Uh, finally headed over to San Diego to Camp Pendleton for this pancreation tournament. The temperature right now is in the 90s. It's a really warm day. When I roll down the window, uh, I don't feel any relief. It doesn't feel cool at all. When I roll down the window, it's just hot air rushing by. Now I'm just driving, enjoying the warm air and enjoying some uh, cold blackberries. And I cannot wait to get to San Diego and fight. I am finally here in the uh, San Diego area. First guy I fought and I, uh, we both equally sucked at kickboxing. Uh, that plus the rule of no headshots led to kind of an awkward exchange of kicks here in the beginning. Um, in addition to banning headshots, I think the tournament should have also banned knees as well. Uh, being so inexperienced with kickboxing, um, I, I clinch up with this guy and I try to knee him in the gut, but look here, accidentally end up shattering his family jewels. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I actually talked to this guy before the fight, and he was uh, really cool, uh, and I, ended, I really liked him, so when I repaid his kindness with the knee to the groin, I felt really bad. <laughs> really did feel bad. Hey, dude, if you ever end up watching this, sorry again. So you're about to see that this guy is a much better wrestler than me. Uh, before he takes me down, though, um, we try to do some more stand-up, and if you watch me, I keep uh, throwing these kicks. Um, I was trying to pull this move off, I was only able to do it once, where you kind of throw a slow uh, roundhouse kick and miss on purpose, watch here, so that you can do that uh, hook kick that I just did, and I was only able to pull it off once, it didn't work too well. <laughs> You know, he gets kind of sick of doing the stand-up here, and he does a really nice takedown, really nice suicide takedown here. Beautiful. Unfortunately for him, my jits was a lot better than his, so I'm able to suck him in, break his posture, and get this high guard on him. And right there, I get him in an arm bar, and he taps. And I won my first bout. There were only five competitors in my weight class, so unfortunately I only had two bouts that day. Uh, so this fight is my second and final pancreation bout, and this guy was a much better kickboxer than me. And if you watch, you can see that I pretty much only have two kickboxing moves. Uh, roundhouse kick, and the one that I keep trying here is the failed roundhouse to a hook kick. This would probably be a good time to apologize for the footage as well. Um, I didn't have my camera with me that day, so I had a friend filming with a cell phone. Also, the promoters had a rule that if you wanted to film, you had to stay in a designated area of the mat. So my friend uh, did a good job considering, did a really good job considering he wasn't allowed to move and only had a cell phone on him. As you saw just a moment ago, he takes me down and I immediately establish a high guard. Uh, ground and pound was still allowed uh, in this tournament, just not to the head, so you could still work the ribs and work the gut, and you could 
needed the gut and stuff, so I was really trying to keep him in my guard and really trying to keep him close to me so he couldn't hit me. Hey, you got that arm, Chris. And, uh, he keeps trying to pass my guard, and I see an opportunity here for an arm bar. So I suck him in, and I squeeze my legs, and go for an arm bar, but he's able to shake me off. I immediately reestablish guard and suck him in, and I was considering sweeping him, but I could just feel that I'd be able to finish him from on bottom, so I just kept trying to fight for the submission instead. So here I reestablish my rubber guard, and I go for the gogo plata right there, and you can't really see, but my shin is in front of his neck. I'm actually choking him with my left shin right now, and there's the tap. And I won my second bout as well. Thus ends my pancreation excursion. It was a lot of fun and I actually wish that I was still on it. My score for competition pancreation is a thumbs up. It was a good way for a jiu-jitsu practitioner like myself to get a little taste of the MMA world. It was a good way to see what it's like to compete with striking and grappling, but without getting your teeth knocked in. As for pancreation training, it gets two thumbs up, a gold star, and a big smiley face. For any submission wrestlers out there or any jiu-jitsu practitioners, I guarantee if you were to go try pancreation for even just a week, you would learn new submissions. Besides their vast array of submissions, they are also phenomenal takedown artists. For any wrestlers out there who are looking for a smooth transition into MMA, Pancreation would probably be your best bet. I want to thank everyone for watching. This took a lot of work and it was so much fun to do. If there are any other martial arts styles that you would like to see reviewed, or if there are any specific gyms or studios that you would like to see reviewed, or if there are some specific martial arts tournaments in the United States that you would like to see reviewed as well, please leave a comment in the section below, or go ahead and send me a message on my inbox, and I'll go ahead and consider it for a future episode. Thanks again everyone for watching. If you'd like to see more episodes like this one, please comment and subscribe. Shout out to my friends at American Pancreation down in Mesa, Arizona. It was great training with you guys. And finally, good luck everyone with your fitness goals and your martial arts pursuits.